successfully identifying and removing the seizure onset zone, it's the most important predictor of outcome in epilepsy surgery. But it's actually only achieved in about 60% of cases. Uh, and so in these other 40%, some of it is because people are avoiding eloquent cortex, but some is because it's just hard to find the seizure onset zone. Um, and so we try to look for additional information that can help us find the seizure onset zone. And so the thing I was looking at in particular was intraictal epileptiform discharges or spikes. One big thing is that it looks like spikes do in general localize the seizure onset zone. There's a lot of evidence that spikes tend to be close to the seizure onset zone and often overlap with the seizure onset zone. But I was discussing some of the big challenges of using spikes to find the seizure onset zone. Um, one of the biggest challenges is that patients often have multiple spatially distinct spike clusters. And the proportion of spikes in each of those clusters fluctuates over time. Um, and so I'd say one big clinical takeaway in terms of just trying to find the seizure onset zone, if you're using spike location, you should make sure you're looking long enough. And it looks like ideally you need about a day of data possibly if you can, including sleep, to capture the variability that occurs in the spike location. Right now, the way that we used, and in, in, so we use interictal spikes clinically by basically just by eye, kind of looking at the EEG and seeing where the spikes are coming from. And we're kind of just picking spots of time over which to look. And manually, it's very hard to by eye figure out what the variability in the spike spatial distribution is. And so one thing that I proposed with my talk is that it might be helpful to use automated spike analysis to incorporate that into the clinical setting so we can add these bits of information that are just so hard to get manually. It hasn't really been used much so I think one of the issues is that um, it's hard to use so the current clinical um, spike detectors that are available don't work very well. They were kind of built a long time ago, but um, in research the automated spike detectors are getting better and better. And so I think as these get better there might be more of a real role in the clinical setting for this quantitative spike analysis. One thing that's really useful to consider, um, spike timing is something that people haven't really talked a lot about in the clinical setting, but is really interesting from a research standpoint. So not just looking at where the most frequent spikes are, but looking at which spike occurs first in a spike chain, because very often you'll see spikes occurring in multiple channels at around the same time. But if you zoom in with quantitative EEG, you can figure out which spike happens first. And that spike actually does better than the other spikes at finding the seizure onset zone. And so using that additional timing information can also be really helpful.